Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to speak here. It's like back to home. Since three years ago, I stayed here. So today, the topic is to, to give a new formulation of the growth target formula. So uh, I will not go to the proof part. But if we have time, we may discuss a little bit. I will start with the original gross target formula and then move to uh, our statement. So this. This is the first part. Uh, so let f in S2 gamma 0 n a with two new form. So it's a holomorphic cast form, uh, which is eigenform and normalized such that a1 is 1. And then we take a quadratic quadratic extension, k over q, quadratic extension. Uh, imaginary, imaginary quadratic extension. And we assume this Higgin assumption. It says every prime factor of P split, splits in K. P divides N, then P splits. Splits in K. And this Higgler assumption implies a decomposition of N decompose into i times i bar as ideals. Sorry, I write n o k. And with this i, i prime, co prime. <coughs> now from this i, we construct elliptic curves and then we get a point on the modular curve. Then we get a point, we call it P, which is C mod OK maps to C mod I inverse. This is a point on the modular curve, complex point. So that OK is a Z module of rank 2 embedded into C. So you, the quotient gives you a complex torus. And uh, it actually gives one elliptic curve. Now we have another elliptic, elliptic curve. This is an isogeny, strictly isogeny of order n because of that. So this OK mod i is just Z mod nz. So we get a point here. And then this theory of complex modification says this point P is actually defined over lumber field. P is defined over the Hilbert class field. So we obtain one uh, algebraic point on the modular curve. Now we try to decompose this P to into eigencomponents, eigencomponents of the modular form. And uh, we also try to decompose it into the, uh, corresponding to the Galois group. So here we take a character.
This is our character. So this Galo group is also the it's isomorphic to the class group of K, since it's here by class field. Now we define this P chi. We define it to be a sum twisted by chi. And then here, this, uh, this sigma is x on p, not minus the infinity to get degree 0. This infinity is the cusp on x 0 n. So that gives a point on, it is not a point, it, it is a divisor. <coughs> and then it is a point on the Jacobian. J0n denotes the Jacobian of x0n. Oh, yeah, thanks. Can you see here? See here. Now, we take the eigen component corresponding to the hack operators. Still in that group, that one or that one? So it's like we take eigen, eigen component twice. Firstly, this is like chi eigen component, maybe like chi inverse eigen component, corresponding to the action the, of the Galois group. Now we take eigen component corresponding to the action of the hack operators. Here it comes the. Uh, yes. T n. So now here comes the theorem. L prime F chi one equals So this is the this is the form was the formula proved by Gross and Zagier. Mm. No, this should I write here. <laughs> so now I ex explain the notations. So this L. L F chi S. This is the ranking cell by the L function. So we may think it so ranking cell of we have this L F S. This is degree two over over Q, and we have it, this L chi S. <coughs> This actually, it has degree one over k, but the degree two over f, uh, over q. We do the ranking cyborg, we get a degree four.
And uh, this FFPET is the Peterson inner product. And this H is the class number. And this U is the unit, the rules of unity. So it's size of half of number of rules of unity in K divided by two to normalize it. So it is one for almost all K. This DK is the discriminant. And then this narrated height. It goes from J0n, or maybe Picard, the same thing. Q bar. To R. And we extend it to C as a Hermitian pairing here in the in the original setting. So now, uh, here I remark the, the generalizations of this formula. So Shou Wu Zhang did a lot of substantial generalizations of the formula around 19, uh, around 2000, around the year 2000. So the major. Uh, and remind me what was the uh, the constant equation that you used. Uh, so the Higgler con condition, Higgler assumption, uh, forces the epsilon factor to be negative one. The root number. The root number. So it is odd. So, actually, it's sorry. Mm. Okay, I remind I I remark here. Higgler assumption implies the root number, this root number. So one is the center. F chi one at places v equals. One next one. This is for v equals infinity. This is for v finite. So now the global root number is negative one. So is n square two? Uh, not necessarily. So in Shou Zhang's uh, formula. This Q becomes totally real field. And this X0n was generalized to Schmer curves. Over F. And also, so uh, now this this k becomes k over f, cm extension. This character chi becomes character of on k, more general one. Then under one assumption, it's like the conductors here should be co-prime to each other. So this f, sorry, f is the most important thing, becomes some pi. It's just like here by modular form. And then with the assumption that 
the conductors are co prime. So we have conductor for this f or for this pi, have conductor for, for this chi, and we also ho have conductor of k over f, just the discriminant of k over f. Those are co prime to each other. So this is one uh, ramification restriction. And uh, this assumption is more general than the Higgin assumption. For example, Higgin assumption says P, if P divides the level, then P splits. So of course, this level N is co prime to, the level is co prime to the discriminant. So now recently, in yeah, our joint work, in my joint work with, uh, so the cusp was replaced by the uh, Hodge, Hodge bundle. It, that was also the, the new part of Shou Zhang's formula. So in the joint work with Shou Zhang and Wei Zhang, this is go going to be a book. It's almost finished. So we, we mainly removed this ramification assumption. So with this setting, but removed the assumption. Get the formula. Without the, the ramification assumption. So this L function, because of this root number assumption, it vanishes at one. Uh, we also need that. Uh, need that. So we, uh, maybe in another word, if that one, we also have a formula, even without this assumption, but then it gives zero equals zero. <laughs> it's like we. It doesn't give you a value when. Yeah. When the yeah. Mm, no, no. It, it's like z zero equals zero by some trivial representation reason. So we had a statement very close to, uh, very similar to this one, but just use representations. But now today, uh, I introduce a statement using uh, heights on abelian varieties. Abelian varieties and it is due. And we introduce automorphic representations with rational coefficients. So the new, in, new statement mainly has two, two things, two, two new ingredients. First is we compute heights of points on abelian varieties. Of course, modular abelian varieties. Sorry? Still way two, still way two. And the second is automorphic representation with rational, or maybe say, algebraic coefficients. So before going to that, we may first try to rewrite this formula as a height variant on elliptic curves. This is straightforward, provided we have the modularity theorem. So we have this modularity theorem. This is due to Wiles, Taylor Wiles, and Gruyer, 
Conrad Diamond Taylor. And we also need 14 isogeny theorem to get the parametrization. So the theorem just says in, in that setting. Oh, no, not that setting. So sorry. The theorem says if we have E over Q and a little curve over, sorry, conductor N. Then there exists a finite morphism phi from x zero n to e defined over Q. So this is the big theorem. With this theorem, theorem, we can move. So now every e corresponds to one f and this PKF becomes really becomes a point on E. So it's easy to rewrite it. We also normalize it such that we map the cusp to zero. So then the theorem becomes L prime E chi one, we still need this chi equals so this F suppose it corresponds to E. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's just in the so Gorsa Gera case. No, 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 no. So F is the P corresponding. F are the rational criterion, right? Uh, no, the F and the P are, for the moment, I didn't. So, so you mean I can just write F, P is like an F? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just rewrite it. Uh, not rewrite, not special case. Special case of this one? Right, right, special case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, of course, yeah, yeah. In the case that if, if, the, if the coefficients of f lie in q, yeah, only in that case. Oh, I forgot that part. If, if f corresponds to e, and now, so we, we should start with e, and then we find f. So, sorry, we start with e. So, start with e. And then we find f by the modularity theorem. And then we also have this chi, the same thing. And then we find we find a chi and find k and a chi. And then we have this statement. So now this point, the projection to f component just becomes the map phi, map to e. So now the height is on, the height now is on e. The new part is this degree phi. It comes from the projection formula of the height pairing. So now we move to the next stage. We consider the uh, 
the new formula we formulated. It's, it's similar to that, that one, but just we use more representations. So now we first consider this abelian variety. Parameterized by Schmerer curves. So let F to be a totally real field. And uh, let B be an a quaternion algebra over A. So by that we mean that like B is a restricted product. Maybe it's people can can't see that part. So B is a res restricted pro product. But the key thing for us is that we do not require B to be the best change of a quaternion algebra over F. Oh. So A is AF. So now this B, so, so we have a set sigma is a finite set of places of F. Then this B is the product pi V dV times M2 A sigma, where this dV is the unique division quaternion algebra. Over F V within sigma. So now if sigma the cardinality is even, then we know we can find one quaternion algebra over F. Then this B really equals B A for some quaternion algebra B over F. But if sigma is odd, then we don't have such a thing. But actually, this is the case for the, our formulation of the gross target formula for the geometry of the Schmerer curves. So if this one is odd, we can't do that. Then in this case, we, we call it, call this be incoherent. So in that case, we can call, call B to coherent. Now we assume, we assume the sigma odd, and assume sigma contains all Archimedean places. Then this sigma, then this B gives us a Schmerer curve. Then this B cross determines a Schmerer curve. X equals limit U, X, U. So this U is open compact subgroup of BF cross, just like the final part of B, and take the multiplicative group, open compact. So, uh, oh, defined over F. And uh, each XU is a projective curve, projective smooth curve over F. To get the connection with the classical language, the language of uh, Schmura and Dolin, we take a uniformization, composite uniformization. So it's like for any sigma, I don't use sigma, for any tau, any embedding tau, we consider the tau point, x, u, tau, c. Then that one has a uniformization by upper half plane.
Let's be tau is the quaternion algebra corresponds to this sigma without tau. So we remove one place, we get a coherent one, a quaternion algebra over f, and then we get this uniformization. That cusp part is usually it is empty. It's not empty if and only if we are in the case of modular curve. So the key property for this indicated by this writing is that this uniformization actually is true for any tau, for any tau. We just change the invariant of B to get the uniform uniformization. So this bold B is really the intris intrinsic group to define the Schumer curve. Now we make a definition an abelian variety A over F, sorry, a simple abelian variety is parametrized by X if there exists a long constant map x u to a for some u for some open combat subgroup. So this definition is analogous to this modularity parameter, parameterization. So if, if a is parameterized by x, then a will be automorphic. But we require a little bit more. It's like it's automorphic and the we require some jagged long length lifting to B exists. So remark here. A is parameterized by X if and only if. Firstly, it's like A is automorphic and then automorphic Somehow it corresponds to uh, this. Maybe I. Okay, right. Then let's go back to that later because I will introduce a lot of definitions. Yeah. Go back to that la later. And then. Uh, yes, in some sense, yeah, yeah. For the, as a quotient of the Jacobian by hack operators. And so it would be, uh, basically by some Yes, 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 yes. This, so this is field M. It's endomorphism 0A. This is just endomorphism of A over F. Tensor with Q. This is a lumber field. Finite extension of Q. And uh, actually, the degree of Q is exactly the dimension of A. So A is GL2 type, GL type by the multiplication of M. Uh, I will go, go back to that. Uh, beca because it, it will be too. Okay. I will introduce the notations and then okay. Now we we introduce one notation. This is very important for us. Define this pi a to be home per c zero x a. So this one is this 
this one is sort of defined as this one. So this is a limit over all levels u. On each u, this is like the space of parameterizations. Now this cos u is the Hodge bundle of the Schmerk curve, and we require this homomorphism maps the Hodge bundle to zero on A by the push forward. So this cos u is like a base point. It's just like we normalize like that. Now infinity is replaced by cos since if the Schmerk curve is compact, we don't have infinity. Cos u is the Hodge bundle on x u, and in the definition as a base point. Map cos u to zero on a up to the torsion since we we tensor with q. So this is just the set of all parameterizations, and then. It has an action by the hack operators, hack correspondence piece. And we take the limit, so it has action by the whole multiplicative group, B cross. So we let this B infinity cross act trivially. And it also has an action by m. So the action of m, x, m x here, and the hack operators x, x here, and so we get a multiplication here. And then those two actions commute. So we change the viewpoint a little bit. We get this pi a is a representation, is a representation of b cross over an m, m vector space. So this, this is what we mean by automorphic representations over number field. So the coefficient now is m. m is not, uh, not c, it's a number field. So now, for any for any embedding iota from m to c, we use this embedding. Then we base change. We get a complex representation. Then that one is close to the the automorphic representations we usually talk about. Pi a iota. This one is a complex representation of B cross. Oh, I left the infinite part, infinite part x trivially. And then that's sigma a. So this B cross is not an algebraic group over F. So to talk about the automorphy, automorphy of this representation, we mean the automorphy of its jagged Langlands correspondence. So this sigma, sigma a iota, this is defined to be the jagged Langlands of pi a, jagged Langlands lifting of pi a iota. So this, this can be defined locally. <coughs> Sorry. Now this one is automorphic. Yes. Yes, so this pi a, uh, sorry, this is irreducible, irreducible, admissible. 
and then it is a local product, and locally we define it, and then we get a tensor product. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, th this is a theorem. But th this, this is a theorem, yes. Um, not really. The, that's sort of followed from the, but I don't say anything. I just define that one. And now I will say it is automorphic. Okay. Yeah, this is yeah, essentially Eichler Schmuel. Then it is, it is automorphic. Now I say that automorphic. This cuspidal discrete way to everything we we want. Wait two two two. That part follows from Eichler Schmuel. And the Jagellon. Yes. Uh, not necessarily. The central character of pi A, not necessarily. Finite. Yeah, it's finite. So it depends on M. If M is totally real, then the central character is, is trivial. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's real. It, it's still, yeah, yeah. Still could be quadratic. So now here is a result. This is a theorem, but it's not that hard. This is proved by us, but it's straightforward by this construction. That's sigma A, iota. This is a set. This one actually descends to a sigma A. And irreducible, admissible representation of sigma A of this GL2A. Oh, uh, sorry, not, not exactly correct. I can only take the finite part. Mm. Take finite part, finite part. Over M. Maybe I don't write, I, I don't write finite here. It's just too annoying. So I take finite parts here. Uh, then the, here we take finite part. And then this is like an orbit. All base changes are here. Now actually we get one representation over M. Then this sigma A is like the jagged long lines lifting of this pi A over M. Uh, this, yes, the central character is finite. Uh, even the whole central character is finite. Fi uh, has finite image. So, uh, I, I mean, it, yes, at the infinity, what you can imply is it is just a unitary, but we can have more. So this one has a trivial uh, 
So it's like, um, yeah. So now I can finish this, this remark. So this A, let's say over F, simple abelian variety. Then A is parameterized by, by X. F still it's still not so clear here. Sorry, this this I want to write more. I just write here. It's like that. If this LSA, the L function is a product of this iota. And then L S minus a half, this sigma A iota. Uh, th this is global, no problem. Global is not enough. No. We put the final part here. Um, okay, so f for each V, for each, for each V does not divide infinity, and with this set, sigma A iota, each one is automorphic, automorphic cuspidal way to everything. And uh, the Jacket Langlands lifting exists. Maybe F cross. So I, I should go quickly. So um, now we consider this L function. Now we, we can define this L as pi A as a formal, formal Dirichlet series. With coefficients in M. So we this pi a will be decomposed as a local inner pro tensor product, and for each one, we can define a local factor. Coefficients are in M. So this is only a formal series since it's in M, not in C. But then once we pick one embedding, we get a complex Dirichlet series. We can talk about holomorphic continuation functional equation. So now we view it as a function from C to this M tensor with Q, C. So for each embedding, we get one function. Vector value. Now we, we consider our quadratic extension. So now let k over f to be a CM extension. So this is like next stage. This is like the gross circle formula. The new formulation. So 
CM extension, then we have a, we take a point P, fix one point P in X E cross E A sorry F K K A B. This is like the the this is K cross fixed part of X. It's, it has two copies of the Schmer variety associated to K. This is just a same point. And then suppose we have a character chi from A cross, oh no, from the Galois group. With L, where L over M is a finite extension. So our pi A has algebraic coefficients. So, so now we want our chi also has algebraic coefficients. Now we pick a finite extension of M. So what's oh, I keep the, sorry, thanks. K equals E, but so originally E is a, an elliptic curve. So now, suppose we have this F in pi A. So this pi A is home, because see, X to A. So by this F, we map this point to A. Then get a point. We call it P chi F. Defined to be integration. So that lives in A F bar Q tensor M M L tensor with M. Galois invariant. So this is the same point, the eigen components. Then we have the formula. Finally, we come to the formula. Assume the central character agrees with chi. So by that we also we need to view chi as a so this is view chi as a character of of A E cross by the reciprocity law. So this pi A is the representation we constructed. Then for any F1 in pi A, F2 in pi A dual, we have this P chi F.
So this this in this identity is in this is important. It's vector value that is in L tensor Q over C. Sorry. Eta is eta is at k over q. K over f. So it's like we take embeddings. For every embedding of L in C, we get one identity. We basically need to see, then we can talk about those L functions analytic continuation. And then those are defined in C. Those are in C. Yes. This number? It's just like a different normalization. <laughs> but, but yeah, but because we use the Please. the language of automorphic. <laughs> Yeah, alpha is the local factor. So this alpha, where alpha is defined as a local product. Of course, this is if f1 and f2 are decomposable, then we have that. And then this local one is the same as the local factor in what's for J's formula. Our proof is actually inspired by his formula. Eta is still just eta. Pi A V. One, F2, yeah. Yeah, so, but I first remarked that, so, so we need a parent on the local representations. Oh, that, that's another story. So we have a parent, that's pi A cross pi A dual, we have a duality. Dual here can be actually moved to here by the duality. This duality, duality is defined to be F1, F2, maps to volume of XU. I don't say volume, just degree of the Hodge bundle. And then F1, F2, U, U. So this is like this. If we have F1, it gives XU to, to A. If this is F1, U. And if we have X2, U, F2, U. Now we take the dual of F2, U. So to take the dual, we need to first consider the Jacobian. That's one factor through the Jacobian. We already take the base point as a Hodge bundle. So now then F2 dual. So now it's like, so we have, uh, we want to A to, so A to JU, this is F2 dual, F2 U dual. And then to A, this is F1 U. Now we take that composition, we get a map from A to A, and by definition this is an element of M. And this is just a normalizing factor between different levels. But this normalization it does not depend on U. Then this is a duality map. Yes. 
Yeah, over F is connected, but geometrically it's not connected. So this degree of the Hodge bundle. So, okay. Degree of CU. There are like two, two interpretations. One way, the lazy way is like we use the dx, dy, 2 pi, y squared on this x, u, c. So we have a lot of components. We use this one to integrate. And another way is that it is almost a canonical bundle, and then you modify by this ramified point, mainly the cusps and the elliptical points. So now this pi a, this is a parent induces. So, so locally, abstractly, we have this equivalent parent. Pi A. To, to M. So this is a local parent. Local duality parent by the glo global duality. We know local. Those local group representations are also dual to each other, and now we normalize the local parent such that the product gives the global one. So this is the global one. Oh, I use brackets for here. I use. All right. This is tensor. And uh, one more thing is, this integration only makes sense after we base change to base change to C. But then once we basically see, and then actually we can see that the number we get actually lies in L. Then that part, this number, this local root number, uh, sorry, local uh, number, this, this term lies in L, actually lies in L. Not just L tensor Q tensor C. You, you first compute it in that, and then you can prove it's in L. But this part, this part in, lies in C. C tensor 1. The C part, this part. And that part is vector value. It needs, needs both, both parts. That part lies in L. So the last thing is the, the, the narrow tail height. So the height is also vector values. So we have this height, narrated height, from A F cross Q times A F cro cross Q to R. And we have action of M, and also action of M here, a dual. So now it factors through the tensor. Sorry, right, it's almost finished. So M X here, and you can move here by the dual action. So uh, here, not yet. And then, then that one, that one factors through a map to R tensor M. Not uh, R. Q, M, and then that part is the trace map. So this map is not M linear, because we even don't have an action of M on that one. Now what we do is, there's a unique factorization, such that we take values here, and then take trace of that part to get R. Then that part is M, equal, M linear. And then now the height is also takes values in here. Or we replace R by C. So, okay, I tr should mention one thing. This one equals one for almost all, otherwise it doesn't make sense. This one, alpha V, equals one for almost all V. For almost all V. 
I'll stop here.